Welcome to our webinar on introduction to the MuleSoft AnyPoint platform. My name is Shashank. Uh, I'm a developer relations senior manager at Salesforce, and I'm joined today by Satya, uh, who is a tailored developer. And Satya, I hear you have some very interesting AnyPoint platform content today to share with our attendees. Yes, Shashank. Is I that do. true? I do. I do. Good yep. to hear. <laughs> All right. Before uh, we go ahead, let me tell you that we might make some forward-looking statements but which just that are uh, generally not available. So if you're making any buying decisions, uh, don't make them based on uh, what we are presenting today. Only make it based on your own research. With that, uh, let me just uh, uh, tell you that we are all up for social. We are available on our uh, Ethereum Salesforce Twitter handle, at Salesforce Developers, Facebook page, uh, LinkedIn page, Salesforce Developers, and you can also watch all of our awesome video content on our YouTube channel, which is again, without any surprise Salesforce developers, right? And uh, also note that this webinar is being recorded and the recorded uh, recording and the slides will be posted on the same page that where you registered for the webinar shortly after the webinar. And a uh, few more housekeeping items. Uh, we, are, we are going to have a live Q&A towards the end. Uh, so you don't have to wait until the end uh, to ask your questions, you can just put your questions inside the questions uh, tab inside GoToWebinar. And uh, towards the end, we'll pick as many questions as possible to answer. So keep asking your questions. Uh, we're very happy to take any of your questions. And in case uh, we don't get to your questions, uh, just in case, uh, with the interest of time, you can still go ahead and post on the uh, developer.salesforce.com forums where uh, you get answers from everybody in the community. Right. Let me also tell you that uh, once in a while, uh, technology is not perfect. So if you have any issues with audio or video, the best solution is to just exit go to webinar and join again, and that fixes the issues 99% of the times, right. almost 100% of the times. So with that, uh, let's go into today's agenda and over to you, Satya. Thank you, Shashank. Uh, good morning, everyone joining us today. Thanks for giving your Friday morning. Let's have a good weekend start. With our webinar you have some work to do towards the weekend probably after completing this webinar without further ado let me introduce you to uh, the agenda of our webinar today uh, today we're going to talk about uh, how complex an integration is and uh, how can we make the integration simple by using our newest platform there so to do that uh, we are going to discuss about the concepts related to the apis because uh, today we are going to create the integrations based on those apis that's why i call it as api led connectivity for the integrations there and we'll also learn how to create the application networks like uh, combine more applications to form a network of integrations there and uh, we are going to talk about the uh, architecture of this AnyPoint platform, how it is built, and we are also going to go through the life cycle of the AnyPoint platform there, and we'll see different phases or stages where we can build the applications. And finally, uh, we are going to create an integration, uh, or at least demo an integration, where uh, a Salesforce org is going to talk to some third-party org, and the third-party org is going to talk back to the Salesforce org. With that said, uh, let's first try to understand the complexity of the integration. Let's try to understand how the integrations were done uh, since so many years in the using the legacy integration patterns. You know, Shashank, I've been working in my earlier uh, experience. I was working a lot on integrations, and mm -hmm. uh, always it was a nightmare for me whenever I get a new integration requirement. But because, isn't it easy just such the system connect and it's and the job is done right what's the complex complex about it that's how it looks from outside <laughs> but internally i know how complex it is now let's take an example here if you see this uh, you have an app, you have an app which needs to be integrated to a database see that's what i said it's very simple yeah it like, really <laughs> looks simple right so uh, we in, in order to implement this integration uh, first the anyway the database is going to have its service up it would have implemented its service but as a uh, system which wants to integrate this application needs to write the client side code so whenever you want to do an integration, we need to write a client code in order to get connected to that uh, server system. Now, let us say we got one more integration, one more integration to be done. So we need to connect to one more server, one more application. Probably, again, we'll have to write one more client code. What if we get a third application to be integrated? 
then we'll write a third client third code client. client yeah fine then Simply what if write. we get more and more and more integrations hey you keep writing the client 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 for all the integrations there so you can see your code becomes really spaghetti like your network looks spaghetti and it becomes very complex i think now i'm getting what you're trying to say <laughs> yeah so for small organizations where we have like a little number of integrations this is fine but as the organization grows or the application talks to more and more applications it's really tough to manage these integrations right so we need to have some common platform where all these applications could connect probably and then uh, they can talk to each other through the platform that makes the thing simple right so for that uh, we have we as as you can see in this uh, slide there uh, we can create a single connectivity in fact we have a single connectivity platform now all these applications can get connected to this platform now i can see the diagram the diagram looks simple right you can compare this integration diagram with your earlier integration diagram this looks pretty straightforward right. I should, i'm statement <laughs> yes there's almost point to point so you so every system is connected to the other system to talk to it but here everything is connected to a single connectivity platform now let's try to understand what is the single connectivity platform all about so we have a platform called anypoint platform uh, which is developed by mulesoft so mulesoft as you know has uh, created a platform for the integrations since very long probably since 2003 if i'm not wrong so they started integrations with the esp and to the extent of microservices today we can even integrate the microservices using this platform there in this platform we can design the integrations using their design tools and we can also manage the integrations while they are running it also provides the runtime for us and it provides a marketplace where we can publish our integrations and uh, as i said uh, this is a runtime where we can run our applications and uh, of course so you can scale your integrations like anything you start with a very simple integration and then you can scale your integrations a lot any point exchange sounds a lot like app exchange so are you going to discuss a little bit about that yeah yeah we have something about access app exchange in our coming slides now let's try to understand the term application network so i was telling application network in the uh, beginning of the session so wherein many systems may be connected to other systems through the integrations so this collection of integrations and the systems all together we can call it as an application network with this uh, mulesoft anypoint platform what we are going to do is we are going to create a network of integrations right so this is where use of uh, any point platform helps us so what is the benefit of this platform then we can connect any application we can connect the data to the uh, plugins whatever you are seeing there we call them as nodes each node is an integration endpoint and you can connect to any of these nodes and not only that uh, while you you can see here that i have connected many systems to different nodes and you can connect the nodes without uh impacting other consumers who are using that node currently not only that node where whatever in the integration platform we can plug in your uh, systems new systems to this network easily and if you don't want that integration you can also unplug in easily that's one benefit and uh, one more major benefit is it's all in one platform where you can design your application uh, you can deploy it. It provides a pass basically where you can develop the applications there and you can deploy the applications. You can also manage and also uh, take care of the security and all, all at one place. And not only that, it uh, makes the administrators or other kind of people who are not really uh, core technical guys to integrate using this platform so they can automate their uh, business processes uh, for all LO basic works and uh, once an integration is created if someone else wants to use uh, or create a similar kind of integration they really need not create a new integration they can use the existing integration and uh, connect to their application so this is all possible uh, because of uh, this apis what is an api what are we going to do there uh, we'll talk much about it in later slides but uh, let me introduce how it 
works, how the architecture is devised for this API led connectivity. Basically, every end system which provides a service, like here you can see database, uh, FTP, IOS, social apps, all these uh, end systems, they can create an API and they can expose that API. We call it as a connector. Now, database can create a connector. Similarly, all other systems can create the connectors. So these connectors uh, take care of how the data is moved from this end system to the other system. So all these connectors together, we call them as system APIs. Now, generally a core integration engineer who is uh, really technical works on the uh, system APIs there. But uh, how about other people who are not really technical, right? I have that question because that's how a platform is, right? Yeah. We give them process oriented architectures. Yeah, and that too for the past few years, I've been working on Salesforce platform and my life really became easy because most of the times I do point and click and I build the applications, right? So I really write the code these days now. Uh, so I got uh, accustomed to it. So I really need not care about what, uh, in this case, integrations. I need not really care about what is the technology or the protocols that are needed in order to integrate with that system. Now, let us say if you want to integrate with MySQL system, what are the underlying protocols or technologies you need not really care about? All are available in your system APIs. Then your administrator or a business uh, person who really doesn't know much about these technical, uh, core technical uh, aspects, he can just use those APIs, the connector. You can use that, those API specifications and he can build his own processing integration. You can see here, he has connected all these SaaS, partner app, and some web services to build the order processing. This layer of APIs, where the business people work for their LOBs, we call it as a process APIs. These set of APIs are called process APIs. Now you can see, uh, you can combine uh, connectors and create a new API, like here you can see feedback API, and you can create whatever custom APIs you want to using these uh, basic system APIs there. Now, uh, end user are probably an innovation engineer who doesn't know even the administration part. Probably he wants to get connected or work at the user experience level. Then we do have one more layer of uh, APIs where he can combine these APIs at the process level into a user interface level API. That's uh, exactly my question because we are uh, moving towards web standards and it should be easy for uh, like either a web app or a mobile app to uh, access these APIs and it has to be light. Right, right. right. <laughs> it is, it has to be specifically for the user interface purpose. Yeah, he, so he should is not be for bothered. that. Yep. Is this for that? Yep. yep. So he should not be bothered with all the uh, like no uh, intricacies of the technology. He really need not care about uh, what's happening behind the scenes. Sir. He can build his own experience API. And finally, he can integrate with one of the systems, maybe a mobile system or maybe a web system or like you know, he can integrate to his web application or any other application for that matter. So this is how the APIs are organized. And you can see that uh, I'm in fact creating a more composite API by using all fundamental APIs. So these APIs are existing. So we can, like whatever diagram we saw earlier, like whatever you're seeing is the nodes part there, in your application network. So these APIs form the node part there. Wow. Now, with that said, let us see how uh, each of these nodes can be built. Now, so everything when we are building from the scratch, probably we are not going to build the complete application network in a day or a night, right? It doesn't look easy. <laughs> so many nodes that you have to build. Let's right. start with one. One. So when you start building your uh, APIs, uh, so you, we form a life cycle very much similar to your, the, your software development cycle. I believe most of the people who are attending this webinar uh, have at least heard or used the, the software development life cycle, right? So what do we do in software development lifecycle? We design the applications, we develop the applications, we do a lot of testing, QA of the applications, then we deploy the application, and probably then we maintain or manage the application. We get a new user requirement, then you again design for that requirement and that cycle keeps going, right? So we have a similar mapping uh, lifecycle here. 
for the application node in the AnyPoint uh, API. Uh, but I will take a small detour here. So I'm not going to ta start my discussion from the design. Rather, I'm going to talk about Engage first because uh, that is the for any success uh, platforms. So this is the success formula. We need we need to make people collaborate, work together to create more and more complex systems, right? Complex or complex made easy. Complex made easy. Okay, that, that's more appropriate. That's <laughs> yes. more appropriate. So yeah. So here, uh, in, uh, engage uh, basically we do it using our any point exchange. Have you ever heard? Uh, I should not ask that question, right? uh app exchange of salesforce you you do we do generally what do we do when we develop an application on salesforce platform we try go to app exchange and try to find if that similar application is already available and if it is free probably we'll take it <laughs> <Very easily. laughs> uh, but even if it is uh, a license based still i i don't think it is uh, expensive right if, when we build the application right from the scratch it's more expensive than that it is so here we have a, a similar kind of exchange called any point exchange where you can uh, find already pre-built uh, APIs there which you can use for your purposes and you know what whatever is published in this uh, any point exchange they are published in the form of API specifications you know the difference between uh, API and API specification Shank? yes specification yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'll tell you what. Yeah, so what I know, uh, API is actually the interface and specification actually describes how that interface works. Exactly, exactly. So API specification has an associated document along with the uh, technical specification of the API there. So when you go to the API, uh, any point exchange there, you can find the different APIs and you can see the specifications. You also have the information about how to use it with proper set of examples and a lot of documentation there. Right. So what are the other benefits of any point exchange? So as I said, uh, there are many pre-built uh, APIs there. Uh, most of them are even uh, provided by the Microsoft uh, platform itself. So, mm -hmm. this, uh, so they are all proven APIs, well tested in the Microsoft ecosystem, and then you can straight away use it without any hesitation. Right. I want and, to see this now. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to show you. <laughs> are you going, going to show, show me a demo? Yes. Wow. Yes. And uh, let me show you. Anyway, uh, other than the Microsoft uh, provided APIs, if you want, you can create your own APIs and uh, share across your internal teams for their benefits. So let's go ahead and see a demo because I know as a technical person, so I can talk hours together, but without seeing anything hands on, I'll not be really happy. So let's go there. Let me go to the browser. Uh, let me log in into my design uh, center or let me do it so I can sign out let me show it right from the beginning I'll show you from the login screen how you get into the system let me sign in there once you sign into the any point platform uh, you can see this home page where you can find different components like design center about which we are going to talk about in a short while and then here we have exchange and uh, we have an AnyPoint Studio. This is the um, your standalone system version where you can uh, install it on your local system and also work on your local system other than cloud. If you want to work on a local system, you can do that using AnyPoint Studio. And uh, we have a management center uh, which has almost all the control of your AnyPoint uh, API platform there. But yeah, we are talking about Exchange. Let's see how to discover uh, different APIs in the Exchange so when we open it you can see that uh, there is something called as assets okay uh, we are going to talk about assets also uh, in a short while but uh, for your information assets are the uh, basic components of any point api platform it could be as small as a data type which we call it as a fragment or it could be a uh, integration pattern in that case we call them as templates okay so you can find each and every asset here can go uh, there are different types of assets you can see here you can find connectors templates examples rest apis soap api blah 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 a lot of things we're going to talk about these things in short while but again uh, you can go uh, there are two options on the left side you can see 
Uh, one says Salesforce DR, which is my organization, and the other one is provided by my MuleSoft. So whatever APIs we have developed within the organization you can see under this heading. And you can go to provided by MuleSoft. You can see a lot of APIs, pre-built APIs. I can keep scrolling. Okay, almost like infinity. There are a lot of APIs which are already there. You search for any API here, you can find that API. Okay. So just give the name and search for that API. You can find those APIs. Anyway, let us go back and open one of the uh, connectors and see. Let us say I want to search for a Salesforce connector. So let me search for a Salesforce connector. You can see there are so many Salesforce connectors, right? So uh, it has connectors for the marketing cloud, it has connected for the connectors for the sales cloud, it has connectors for the app cloud, and so forth. Now let's open one of the connectors here and see how it looks. So as I said, uh, every connector has an, uh, or any, for that matter, any asset on the uh, API exchange has some documentation there, right? You can see a documentation. It also shows you what are the different types of integrations that we can do on the Salesforce platform, okay? And on the right side, you can see the information about this API. You can see what type of asset is it. Right, uh, whether it's a MuleSoft provided assert or your organization provided assert, right? Then uh, publish date, and you can see uh, different versions. So this particular API has evolved to different versions. If you want to go back and check the notes of the earlier version, you can still do that. You can go here and check for that version as well. Okay, and it provides some helpful links as well. So. Uh, Bottom line is you have uh, any point exchange where you can find different API specifications. You can uh, straight away use those API specifications to build more complex API specification, which is suitable for your application. Sounds good, Satya. So how do we build these API? We're getting a lot of questions. Can we see, can we see? Even I'm very eager to see. Definitely, definitely. But let's go back to presentation once. Um, So we talked about the first phase of the API there, that is engage. Now let's talk about the next phase. So as I said, we always start from the engage. First, we'll try to find if the API is already available there, then we'll directly use. If it's not available, then we'll go design and uh, use that API. So how do we design? As you were asking, we need to definitely go there and uh, build our APIs. It should be again, there should be a good hands on there. Let's do that. Uh, but uh, where are we going to build our APIs? There are different options for you where you can build the APIs. You can do it on the web, on the cloud, using the Pro Designer, or you can also use the uh, a IDE called AnyPoint Studio, which you can install on your local system and then develop the API there and then finally deploy it onto the cloud. Right, so that's where we are going to write the APIs, and there are a few more benefits with the uh, other tools like you no know, AnyPoint platform, wherein uh, we can write an API, and then uh, we can also test it uh, on the platform itself. If it really works, then we'll go forward. Otherwise, we can redesign the API. Right. So what we are going to do is we are going to design the API. We are going to develop and test it. If something is wrong, go back to design, develop and test it. You can keep on doing that cycle. Now, uh, let let us go. Let us go and discuss other concepts like API console and RAML. I'm going to talk about all these things uh, in our demo. So let's straight away jump into the demo and see how it goes. Can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> so. Let me go back here. So as I said, uh, you can go to the design center where you can build your API. Let's go to the design center there. Let us create a, uh, because we are just starting, probably we can create a hello world kind of application which just gives some message out there. So I think that is the best place to start writing the code. Whenever, whenever I write the code or learn the new technology, that's how I do. I write a hello world, I get like comfortable there, and then I start writing more and more complex programs. And then the world becomes something complex like uh, dynamic <laughs> yeah. values or something like that. <laughs> yes. Now, let's go ahead. 
and uh, once you log into the design center so i see a couple of project types here uh, satya there is something called mule application there is something called api specification what are these yeah so um, as i said you can build different kinds of assets mm -hmm. right so you can create a fragment a data type mm -hmm. and then combine those data types to create the api specification mm -hmm. and then you can also create a mule application when i say mule application it's a Full fledged running application which can run on the Mule platform, right? So, some other uh, system can talk to this application on this platform and this can respond. So, the Mule application is actually the API. Can we say it that way? Uh, it's, a, it's a collection of APIs rather than API, let's say it as a complex API. Complex API, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now let's go ahead and see what are the different things that you can build as you were asking like you know, what is application and all so these are the three different things that we can do we can create an api fragment uh, we can create an api specification we can create a mule application okay you can also uh, download the anypoint studio install it on your local system and start working with that but in today's webinar we'll stick to the cloud let's develop our api specifications on the cloud itself let's go there so we can when you click on new api specification you can give some name let us call it as uh, let us say uh, first api is this it looks, really your first looks, api it looks <laughs> odd but yeah or probably you can give some better name but let's make it because the hello let's world. stick to first api yeah. <laughs> yeah so here you have two options uh, you can build the uh, api using the api designer here or you can use your visual editing tool there okay there are two options either this or this so this one is the easiest thing to do uh, i'm i'm going to do the complex thing though uh, so what we can do here is if you have already an raml file that is available to you you can directly copy paste that raml file and then save it your api is ready now i'm hearing a new term what is raml 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 is basically a uh, language a markup language uh, which is called as so the full form is say restful uh, uh, api modeling language where you can model your apis there um, you can write the uh, api specification in simple user understandable as well as system understandable form right um, you would have heard, heard about uh, swagger os earlier api specifications yes right so yep. there's actually one of the questions where does MuleSoft support Swagger API or do you have to work with RAML? Uh, not necessarily. You can use your uh, Swagger API as well. Uh, it internally converts your Swagger API specification to RAML specification. So you still need not RAML, but you don't have to convert it yourself. Right. That's useful. <laughs> yeah. So let's go and see how visually we can build this uh, API. Let's click on Create. So uh, one more benefit here is uh, even before the application is built, you can uh, build the API and then let the third party or the partner uh, know that or the, as per his specifications, his requirements, you can build the API even, if, even before he builds the application there and test the API. If it works fine, you can stick to it or probably change the API and communicate to the other party so he can parallelly work. He really need not wait until this is built now let's go ahead let's call it as first api there are actually a couple of questions coming uh, down it's good probably good good idea to answer it now. yeah but some questions are on raml because we are introducing another programming language right yeah. <laughs> so people are curious so uh, to answer raml is a markup language like html uh it is only for uh specifications it's not exactly for logic and stuff like that so it, it doesn't have it doesn't really have functions and all those things it's just a description language where similar to html it's only markup and uh i mean there was one question on can you please repeat repeat what raml is basically it is uh a syntax in which you describe the api api right right so anyway, we are going to see it uh, in a short while. We'll see it and try to understand RAML in a much better way. So uh, I'm giving the first API. Let us uh, give the version 1.0, and you can use HTTPS or HTTP. Basically, I'm trying 
going to build some REST API here, and uh, I want to return the JSON format uh, data out of it. So in order to return the JSON, I need to create an object probably, and uh, uh, which can be displayed there. So let's create a, uh, a small uh, JSON object. In order to do that, you can go to this create button on the left side, click on create, and uh, say data type. You can create a data type there. Are we creating an API on the fly right now? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so uh, let's create a new data type. Let's call it as uh, my message or anything like that. Um, so this is this becomes our object. So we are creating a JSON object. I want to add a property, very simple property, one property where I can give some output saying message. You know what? I'm typing here and my RAML is getting built on the right side. So this is what a RAML is. I created a title. It took the title from there. It took the version from there. It took the return type, right, response type that is JSON from there. It took the protocol. And while I'm building these data types right like, now, it's also taking uh, building my RAML parallelly. I need not write the RAML right from scratch. I'm visually building it. It uh, creates that. So there was actually one related question around why can't we just use simple XML for this, <laughs> right? So the answer is there is this uh, two ways uh, in thinking about this. Uh, XML was built for a different purpose and it's slightly older. Um, and RAML is easier to write and easier to read as well. Is that correct? Right. Always we try to provide uh, more easier things than the complex things. So if something new is coming, probably that's the easiest thing. So, so if you look at the RAML on the screen right now on the right side, uh, probably the XML version of that will be maybe double or triple the size. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of a lot of tags and uh, wrappers. I don't know. A lot of. So basically, so we are basically taking care of lazy developers. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now. Uh, so uh, while I give this property, I can also give some example how the message looks like. Say I can say hello all or something like that. Okay, and you can see at the bottom, it also creates a JSON object for me. It's a JSON object with one property message hello all. You know what? We have completed building our API specification. Very first API specification. That's it. That's it. Okay. That's easy. Now what next? Can we maybe try using it or something? Yeah. Now let's try to use it. Uh, let's go here. Mm. We have on the right side. Let me move my. Okay, yeah, on the right corner you can see a mocking service. So I can just start the mocking service and start sending the requests. Let us start the mocking service. So what this mocking service does is whatever sample uh, response we have created here, uh, it is going to give that response. But even before that, I need to create a get or post call, right? So let's do that first. So let me stop mocking service for now. Uh, let's go back and let us also create a resource from where we can access the data. So you can give any path uh, here. If you want to give some relative path, but because this is a hello world program, I, I don't choose to. I want to keep it as simple as possible. So I'm just keeping a slash there. I'll create a get request. I've selected this get button and I can create a response here. So let us create a response. So I want to create some positive response 200 here means success response in HTTP. So I just want to create that and um, I want to uh, add the body. Response body. What comes in the response? If you go there, so if you uh, we have we are going to uh, return application JSON, but if you want, you can return other formats as well. You can return the images. You can return the stuff, plain text, whatsoever. And I want to return an object because we just created one of the objects now. Uh, I'll directly use that object here. I'll use my message object, so my response looks like this. Now let's go and. Uh, you can see that my get request is also created in my RAML here. Now let's go and start the mock. And uh, do you want to try it? Let's yeah, try it. let's try it. Let's, give it let's a try. go there. And my mock is running. So you can see that my request URL is automatically created. Some mock URL, random URL, right? Which you can see in the RAML file. I'll also show it in the RAML file again. Uh, let's send a request here. Okay. 
that's it when you send a request you get a response so our api is working fine right so now if, uh, let's go back to raml once let me stop my again mocking service is a good practice i don't want to keep the things running if i'm not using it yeah let's save resources yep so you can go to the raml viewer right so this is your raml file and uh, when you start your mock service you can observe that um, it creates a url base url here right now uh, the other person who is integrating your application you can share this base url with him he can start working on it even before build we any before we build any application on the build platform he can start talking to our application or start talking to our specification basically right so you can just configure this url and you can use it and you can continue his working parallelly that's how we are going to speed up the uh, development of the applications as well now let's go back stop the uh, mock service once and uh, once this app api is created probably want to share this api with uh, other uh, inmates or maybe external world want to share it uh, like say with your private space or the public space so that other people can use if it is really a complex api there that you can do using something called as publish to exchange let's go and publish our api to exchange uh, it says like in this first api gives the asset version it gives you the uh, raml file and api version okay just hit publish now it is getting published to the api exchange there so if you remember uh, you know when we were discussing about the uh, uh, any point exchange uh, i was talking about uh, different apis which are provided by the mule soft and also the apis that we can do for our internal purposes so this api because we have created it will be published to the internal uh, uh, api uh, exchange space let us go and see uh, in the api there let us go back and let's get into the api exchange and see how it looks in the api exchange let us go to the main menu go to exchange and uh, you can see your first api is now available in your exchange right isn't it cool so it is it. pretty cool yeah yeah and then published it let's open this specification once and see what are the different things that happened here you see uh, it has created the types right you can go and see your message type i have not built this documentation all right i was dynamically creating the api you, you can see that it gives a simple message example it sees what are the parameters and uh, what type of parameter it is and it also gives the example value everything built from whatever we are given there right and uh, if you have added some resources it shows the resources we just added one resource that is get request go and click on this get request you can see that uh, it gives an example on how to call the get request and what will be the positive response there isn't it cool it is pretty straightforward <laughs> yeah and but still if you want to add more documentation to your api so that other people can easily understand you are free to add the documentation you can go click here and you can write your documentation here right you have a complete uh, text editor right where you can write the documentation in the form of markdown again if you don't know what is markdown right you know markup right html hypertext markup language markdown is another version of uh, writing a browser uh, uh, pages there so do you write it downwards <laughs> <laughs> well, i don't know but it is <laughs> complex i i always like you know, sometimes i i learn so many things i forget how to do the things that's the reason we also provide a visual tool there where you can dynamically build some uh, documentation let us say i want to write documentation about uh, first api here and then i want to give some list items you can test it you can try it whatever you want to write okay you can keep building the documentation and you can see go back to the markdown tab it has built your documentation in the form of markdown so it can it is easily accessible from your uh, web browser okay you need not really uh, worry about what are the html tags that you want to use when you want to write the pages there okay so let us save it as a draft and uh, 
you can exit or probably you can publish it again. Mm -hmm. So it is published as a different version or maybe it is published in the same version there. Then you can exit. This is how you can create your API. Now that you have created the uh, API, what next? What are the other things that you can do there? What right? are the other things that we can do there? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we can build an application as well. Like as I said, like oh, these are the different things. API fragment is small uh, thing. Uh, now you can see we have built a message object there. It's a kind of it's a data type. It's a kind of fragment. Okay. So we've done it right from the API itself. Now let's go ahead and build a mule application. So let's give some name for mule application. Let us call it as Creator or something like that. Mm -hmm. I'm creating an application called Creator. Let us create. And you know what? Uh, when you are registered for this uh, API Exchange platform for the very first time, uh, whatever you are going to do, you will have a help wizard, right? There will be pop ups which are going to support you what to do next. So you can learn by yourself. Because I've done it many times now, I'll just switch it off. But yeah, uh, in order to create an application, first thing we need to do is we need to create a trigger. So there should be some starting point for every application. This is a third party integration, right? So integration in order to start it, there should be some uh, trigger or some external source or some event. There has to be a knock on the door. Uh, yep. Then we can open the door. That's what we can do. So we need to write a trigger there. So when I say trigger, uh, we need not really write. We can use the connectors. Mm -hmm. Few connectors act like triggers. We have something called as HTTP listener. Mm -hmm. which can listen to the HTTP requests and uh, we have something called a scheduler, right? Uh, which you can use. You can use that connector to schedule or write some cron jobs. So to periodically run the task there. Run so the you don't even need to knock the door. Yeah. <laughs> and the third and the best option I generally use most of them uses a uh, Salesforce connector, which internally has the scheduler and you can talk to the Salesforce organization, which we are going to see in our last demo. I'm excited. A lot of people are asking, can we see some real world examples? And I'm sure yeah. we're going to see something more meaningful than hello world here. <laughs> right. So uh, anyway, uh, let me show you at least uh, a HTTP listener or HTTP connector. I'll show you the basic uh, um, um, uh, canvas where you can build the application. You can either take a uh, write your uh, starting point of your application here, mm -hmm. select a connector. But target application can select a connector again. So mm -hmm. let me select HTTP connector here. Then I have to uh, select a target connector. You can do that, or else you can go straight to the canvas. Mm -hmm. If you know how to build the application, you can go straight to the canvas. And here you can go and uh, create your HTTP listener. You can take this. And you need to give the path when a request comes in. You need to give the path where the request uh, lands. Yeah. So let's go and give a path. Sorry, I always end up giving wrong uh, <laughs> slash there. Um, so I uh, created a listener. Mm -hmm. So whenever whatever comes here is going to be listening on this particular connector. Mm -hmm. You know what? We are dynamically doing it on the uh, pass there. Mm -hmm. So we are deploying the application on Cloud Hub. When you click on the run button here, once, every, once everything is ready, it will be deployed on your cloud in the uh, developer mode where you can test it. Okay. So this so, cloud app is hosted by MuleSoft, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if you want, you can even host it on your uh, other servers or server groups or even your uh, VPCs, virtual private clouds, wherever you want to. It can be either cloud or either on premise or either private cloud, anywhere you want to put it. Right, right. Now, here you can add your, uh, uh, your recently built the uh, API, host API. Okay. And then you can configure that API. You can do some setup here, go and give what is the protocol. In our case, it is HTTPS. And uh, what is the host? You can give your real time host there. So, from where you are going to really, because now we are working on the application. Mm -hmm. So, we come to this stage when we our API specification is properly tested mm -hmm. and is working good. So, here you are going to place the URL from your original implementer, right? And you can also give the port number there. Yeah. In fact, I wanted to show, I wish to show 
all these things here. Mm -hmm. I just want to show the application as well, mm -hmm. but with the interest in the interest of time again, like no. Yeah. Um, let's see. Anyway, we are going to see the complete application, a built application, mm -hmm. in which we are going to talk to Salesforce platform and also see the response back. So you already have an application which uses Salesforce connector yes. that we're going to see now. Yeah. Let's do that. So yeah, and once you I've done that. You can run the application. Anyway, I'm going to show all these things in our next demo. You're not going to miss any of these things. I'm going to show all these things in our next demo there. So this is how we can uh, build an application in the uh, design center. So this is uh, uh, one platform, one connectivity platform where we have designed it. We have tested using our mocking service and we also used it in our application there. Okay, let's go back to our presentation once and uh, see what next. So fine, uh, in the previous slide. Uh, okay, one second. In the previous slide, we talked about our uh, design and development. Now, in the next slide, we are going to talk about uh, the other parts of the life cycle. So we can deploy our application on the sandbox we can also deploy our application on the production system so wherever you want you can deploy your application and you can also control your application you can see the uh, analytics of how your application is being used and you can also monitor your application you can like uh, if your application is uh, not really working good you can easily debug the application using our runtime manager there so we have a tool called uh, anypoint runtime manager uh, from where you can see what are the applications that are deployed and uh, you can also uh, start the applications from there you can also stop the applications from there and uh, in fact you can also do the same thing from your anypoint studio these are the two options we have one is the web based tool the other one is the system based tool so ID, can, right? id right we can do it from there as well and um, we can use the there are different tools in our uh, management center uh, as uh, runtime manager is to see the runtime parameters deploying and uh, controlling the application we can also uh, see the apis that are published using our api manager there if you want to make some specification changes you can do it from there and you can also control the access you can create the users you can do the complete setup administration where you can share your apis with other users who want to use that uh, and so forth and uh, last but not the least you can also use a tool called anypoint visualizer which graphically shows how your application is working if something goes wrong you can see it in right there okay let me quickly uh, show that uh, option in your uh, tool anyway because again little time so this is the management center as i said you can do access management you can do uh, use the api manager for that and you can use the runtime manager if you click runtime manager let me show you quickly uh, some applications might be running there you can select that application see the two applications are running currently one application is undeployed you can select an application and make the changes okay so with that said let's go and see how do we do the integrations on Salesforce platform. Yeah, there are like a bunch of ways in which we integrate with Salesforce, right? Right. So there are different options for integrations on Salesforce platform. We can uh, use REST API, we can use SOAP API, we can use Apex REST endpoints, external services, platform events, a lot, right? But still, there is one problem. So whatever integration we want to do on Salesforce platform, we, sh we should uh, at least write a client code if you're using a REST uh, protocol there, or if you're using a SOAP protocol, you have to implement the client stub, right? So we cannot avoid coding. But with any point platform, I'm going to show you that we can write uh, an integration uh, without writing a single line of code. Really? Yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. So it's all because of these connectors, what you can see on the screen. So these are my any point connectors, right? So with that, you can uh, implement any kind of uh, integration with the Salesforce platform. For that, we have many connectors, as you can see on the screen, the small screen on the left side bottom. So these are the different types of connectors that are available. I got these things from search. Mm -hmm many point exchange but uh, i can talk about one of the very important connectors and all the functionalities 
um, that it provides. Like uh, you can do all the CRUD operations on the Salesforce uh, records and uh, you can quickly integrate your Salesforce data with uh, some other systems. You can synchronize the sales data that is on your Salesforce platform with the data that are that is there in some system like SaaS, uh, SAP or any other system for that matter. And uh, not only that, uh, you can also do a bi-directional sync between different Salesforce socks. Maybe you have three or four Salesforce socks and uh, you want to keep uh, all the uh, orgs on the same uh, data uh, uh, state. So it can be done. You can do the synchronization using the Anypoint platform there. And this is all point and click. Yeah. And you also can do the bulk transfers, bulk data transfers. If you want to migrate the data, you can do that. And everything, as you said, is all based on point and click. So with that, let's see a demo important demo okay let me go here i already opened my salesforce org let me give a quick introduction of the use case that i'm going to use here so a, a organization called ab corp library wants to maintain the information about the books so probably one option for them is to get the collection of the complete data a lot lot of data and store it on the local system and implement a library manager application there and start using it definitely that's not the my choice so what is the other way the data is available in some other uh, application probably we can use our any point platform to leverage that and uh, access the data from that uh, application using our uh, api any point api integration so we can do that for that, I'm using Google Books API. You have you ever heard about it? Yeah, I think uh, it's one API where you just give the name of the book and you get all the details about it. Right. You just give the name of the book or name of the author or some part of the book. It gets the complete information of the book there. Now let's go. Let me open uh, one of the records here. Uh, let me open the latest record. What it is? Oh, it's already populated. Let me open one of the records in which uh, I don't have the complete information or probably I can create a new record here. Let us create a book called you uh, can uh, win. Let me save it. Is this a real book? Yeah, okay. uh, it's one of my favorite books written mm -hmm. by Shiv Kera. Mm -hmm. So I read it long, long ago. Uh, now let's go ahead and let's see how it works on the AnyPoint uh, platform. I've already built some API specification there. Let's go to Design Center and try to understand the API specification because now we know how to build the API specification, right? So the things should be easy. So I have created an API called Google Book API. Let us go there. So this is the API, just like how we built our very first API. I built this API, I've given uh, some title, version, HTTPS, and uh, different type of application JSON, and my RAML is built here, and I also given some documentation, right? And I also created a uh, resource here. I've just created a get request. So if someone types like, no, slash books, slash v1, slash volumes, uh, it's going to get that uh, complete information from the Google API. Okay, so it's same. I give it 200. Okay, I have created a example response. Probably I'll get some title, publisher, page count, and I can get a lot of fields. But uh, for to make the demo as simple as possible, I just took a few fields there. And then uh, we can also give some query parameters if you intend to. We can add more and more query parameters there. Right, so this is uh, the same API specification what we have done for the first API. Let's go and see how the application looks. So you built an API specification to use the Google Books API, yep. and you actually build an application using this API and the Salesforce connector. Right. And you, are are, are we going to see that now? Yes. I built a mule application, uh, which I called as book finder. You can see this is the application. Let's get into that application. So uh, this application has different connectors, as you can see. It has a Salesforce connector, right? Uh, what coding did I do in this? 
is i'll show you i just configured my connection when i drag and drop this salesforce connector it is going to ask you to set up the connection to your salesforce sort that's the only thing you need to do so i have set up my uh, connection so i can use say the username password authentication or i can use any of the OAuth authentications that are available so just as you do it in your soap protocol so there is a lot of work that you'll have to do in order to really create the connection between salesforce and third party org so here you can just do it in simple 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 user interface now you need to give your username you need to give your password and i'll give my security token these are the fundamental things that are required in order to connect to my uh, salesforce, salesforce here org. and i can also test if it uh, connects well so you can see that i am using the soap protocol internally to get connected to the salesforce platform uh, so uh, it gives a test successful message that means my credits are really working good let me cancel it and then uh, let's see what are the other things i wanted to do so this connector i have uh, i can configure this connector as i said for all the op create operation read update delete and you name it whatever kind of operations you want to do with integrations on Salesforce platform, all are available in your endpoint connector, Salesforce connector here. Okay. So this one gets triggered when an object is modified? Yep. Okay. Yep. Now I have selected book underscore underscore C. This is the object I have there, right? And uh, uh, so let us go ahead and see that I have Google Book API. In fact, uh, you can see a green line. It is recently run. Mm -hmm. So why? Because I just made a scheduler here. So I created start till zero and frequency 20 seconds. Uh, now that we have a recent book here. So let us go back and once again and let me uh, once refresh this book and see. So I have a book here. Uh, so what we do is uh, you can see that uh, I got some other book. You can't win this in the words. <laughs> Fine. But it worked, right? <laughs> yeah, because I've given the name. You gave the wrong name. Wrong name. I have given you can WI, whatever it is. Uh -huh. right? So you, you can win. It gets the information about the you can win book there. And uh, let us do that anyway. Let us try it once. Let me remove this. Remove this. You can win i can win i can't accept it yeah can't yeah. Win. yeah we have to win <laughs> right so let us save this record and uh, uh yeah let me reload once uh refresh the page probably my page is dirty yeah. <laughs> so i can just change it i can edit it and, and uh, let me remove all these things this information in fact you can see that this information i got it from the google so there's also a book you can't win i don't know that yeah i think it's opposite to your, to your favorite book yeah <laughs> so let us save oops oops no problem that's okay that's okay let's go ahead and uh, understand this what's happening here so i got a request http request right and you can also see the uh, output you can see the payload right these are the different informations i got uh, from there basically i got something called you can't win because i just changed it and then uh, i can also see the attributes uh, if i have some attributes defined there and if i get an error i can also see the error there and uh, i have dragged and dropped my google books api mm -hmm. and i also configured it just like that so i've given the uri of the uh, Google Books API and then the port and the HTTPS water protocol it uses. Okay, so I just given this information and when it runs, you can see this green line indicates that it has run successfully and it got the information there. And uh, you can also see what input we got from there and you can also see what output it is generating for every node. And again, you can see the payload and I have created a uh attribute called book information where i want to show show that information and you can see that whatever i'm getting from the book api is stored in my book information here okay and once i have that information in my node here so i have created another node 
called transform node which uses a special language called data beam expression language and uh, for your information you need not learn this la language here you have visual tools mm -hmm. not, not one more language there so there i can map my book information right so whatever information i got from there title publisher page count i can map it to my output payload so as required by my salesforce book object you can see my book object requires all this information it requires id so i'm directly taking from my payload initial payload i'm taking that id and mapping here and uh, all other three fields i'm mapping here okay and this is called as tube uh, tube like no you can see that this object is mapped your book information object is mapped with your output object and uh, these are called uh, lines so these connecting lines indicate the data from here is stored in your uh, object here in these fields once it is there uh, once everything is ready in our payload which can be sent back to the salesforce so i have created one more salesforce connector to connect back to the salesforce platform again i've used this connector for my uh, book object right and this time i'm using an update right earlier uh, when they have made the changes modified i got the request and now i'm going to update with the new information so i'm getting all the information from my books api and then storing it here and is this the same character as the first one yes and you can actually use it multiple times inside right. the same form. right you can do multiple things with the same connector. so you can configure the connector for deleting the object uh, record you can configure the connector for creating the record or updating the record whatever you want to do on the salesforce platform and it also finally shows a success message that it has properly updated your book there that sounds great so yeah the, uh, this is how you can easily integrate with the salesforce platform and for your information as i said i have not written even a single line of code i have configured my application in point and click mode in my salesforce platform and i have configured my application on the mules of platform as well and just point at me. All right. So this also makes me wonder how can our attendees try this out themselves today? Can they do it? Yeah. As usual, my favorite place where they can do it. <laughs> yeah. That is our trailhead. So we have a trail um, dedicated for the mule soft. Um, you can go through the trail uh, where you have a very quick start where you can build use your salesforce connector and connect to your application and do some data exchange there and not only that you can understand uh, uh, precisely about the use of platform there is one more module that is dedicated which gives the complete description about the architecture and uh, all other things related to the use of any point api all right so that kind of uh... It's pretty much what we have. Do you have anything else for us today? Uh, I think I, in fact, I have a lot to talk. I, I wanted to share very good examples. Like I have a few more demos. I can, there's I can only do. one hour. But yeah, webinar, yeah, right? yes, yes. So always, in the interest of time. <laughs> always I hate uh, ending a webinar. Uh, okay. Because I, I, I always remain back having more to talk in my webinar. So. Okay. So with that, let's uh, quickly move into some some of the questions yes, that we can yeah, take. Least, so yeah. there were uh, some questions around uh, access for developers, right? So do we have a free account or a hobby account? And what is the pricing like and stuff? And uh, there is a trial account for MuleSoft. That's it's a limited period trial that you can actually sign up for and try out on yourself. Right. And if you like it, obviously you there is like just go to the MuleSoft website and you find price pricing options and stuff. But there yes, is a trial that you yeah. can actually try out for free. There's a trial, and uh, but still, you have the complete access to the platform. You can do almost everything what you can do in your real time system there when you purchase the licenses, just like your Salesforce. Okay, so uh, any any ideas on how we can probably impl implement something like microservices and stuff on the platform? Yeah, we can do that. So basically, whatever kind of integration you want to do. You can integrate you can implement like um, so any microservice in fact whatever i've done just now is a sort of uh, microservice which is running which is i'm yes. just returning some service from some small system there it's not and dependent on anything yes 
Okay, so there are some questions around uh, data types. So can we create complex data types like address and arrays and stuff? Yeah, we can we can do that. So basically data types, whatever data type we have just created is a JSON object. This JSON object can become as complex as possible. You can create a separate object called address. You can create a different type of objects and then combine all these sub objects together to form a very complex object there. Fantastic. So uh, there are concerns around version control as well because we're talking about a development life cycle, right? So MuleSoft, does it offer any out of the box version control or uh, is it just Git or Bitbucket or whatever you want to use? So again, as I said, MuleSoft uh, gives uh, different environments, mm -hmm. uh, sandbox mm -hmm. and other environments where you can run the application. And when you talk about the version control, it's all inbuilt. So even you could see that when I was building the application, API specification there, you could see the versions, versions. As, keep I, as I keep making the changes and publishing, my version changes there. At the same time, if you're using the ID, you can probably use any version control that you obviously, want. To use. Obviously, you can use JIT for that matter. Yeah. And uh, so there is one question around uh, is it only for lazy developers or <laughs> is it also for uh, functional consultants who are not coders? Yeah, it's an interesting question. Um, so uh, whenever I get uh, an opportunity, I try to be lazy, uh, but otherwise, I'm always interested in writing complex integrations so any point platform is for everyone if you want to write more complex integrations you want to write some coding there do some stuff and you can do that even for the people who are from the other platforms they can build maven projects and then deploy it on the any point and if you're someone who does not write code you can still build stuff with just a little investment in learning about what is rest and these kind of things that's it. just have to learn a little bit about the terminology and yeah. you know what to do from there because it's all in the visual studio in the web based studio right i didn't mean visual studio by microsoft <laughs> okay um so uh, each URL does it have a unique listener, and can we chain listeners? Um, yeah, we can. We can configure the listener as per our requirement. Um, so again, as I said, this listener could be your basic HTTP listener, or even it could be a scheduler, where you can like you know, start uh, triggering these things. So even scheduler is it acts like a listener, but at periodical times. Okay. And how about? Uh, I mean, one thing we pr probably missed or skip because in the interest of time but how about logging and errors and uh, finding out a specific transaction all these kinds of things is it is it available yeah actually i wanted to show logs for not less than 10 minutes time permits. <laughs> but yeah we have a very good logger there uh, so while you deploy it you can see what's happening in the background and not only that while your application is running you can see how the requests are coming in how the responses are going out of your system that's that's pretty much uh, yeah. what we need, right? So you can see any errors happening. You can see any transactions that you want to find. Uh, everything is uh, available through the logging and the management center. Exactly, exactly. Which we could not manage to show in this webinar. <laughs> yeah, I can see one messages. You can see info messages. You can see error messages. It's all color coding your logs. There. Okay, let's take one last question. Uh, that is uh, pretty much the last question for the day. Any other questions, please feel free to post out on our developer forums. So how does MuleSoft or the AnyPoint platform really stand out from products like IBM API Connect or Tibco, which you might have some experience with? Um, so, uh, the major benefit here is even uh, MuleSoft has CSP implementation there. The major benefit with the AnyPoint platform is it is all API-led connectivity based. So wherein you can build the API specifications very easily. So as I said, like your integration can be as complex that it becomes a nightmare, right? So uh, you can build as complex uh, integrations as possible on this platform, but with uh, a lot of uh, ease and flexibility. Okay, so with that we have come to an end. We've already 10, 10 minutes past the time, but still I think we had we shared some pretty good information. We're getting some great questions that we could discuss and stuff. Thank you so much everybody uh, for uh, joining us today and uh, any questions around uh, any questions that you can get to please feel free to post on our forums. And for people who are wondering, this session is recorded and slides and it's and the recording will be posted on the same page that you used for the registration and uh, you, uh, we also value your feedback we want to know how we are doing we want to know how you want uh, this webinar to be done so 
please feel free to provide your feedback uh, in the go to uh, good webinar survey that's going to come forward with that thank you so much and thank you so much satya See yeah you. thank you thank you shashank and thank you all uh, who have participated in our webinar today uh, thank you so much and see you in the next webinar bye bye